Tests of cuticle thickness showed significant differences between African and European hairs and between African and East Asian hairs. Instances of cuticles cuticle layer separation occurred in hairs from pe persons with African ancestry. And as you can see here, the adhesion between the cuticles leaves gaps, and these gaps all increase our hair's porosity. A number of microscopic characteristics associated with the cuticle are used in hair comparison. The thickness of the cuticle, the variation in the thickness. So I mentioned before in my previous video, we don't just have one layer of, layer of cuticle, so it's not just as easy as open, close, open, close, open, close. Is it high porosity, is it low porosity? It's also the number of layers of cuticles that we have. And as you can see from the Asian cuticle, hella layers. Hey there guys, it is Natural Nadine here, and I'm back with another video. This video is gonna be a part two of why black people can't have low porosity hair. Now, if you haven't watched part one of this video, you're gonna be hella confused. I'm not gonna to touch on the things that I spoke about in the first video in the same way that I do in this video. If you haven't watched that video, you best go watch that first and then come back and watch this one if you're still unsure about what I meant in that video. Think of like the, my first video as more like the theory behind why black people can't have low porosity hair and this video more like the proof. So for those of you who wanted more clarification on why exactly black people cannot and do not have low porosity hair, let's get into the video. Okay guys, welcome to my office. And by office, I mean my kitchen. Um, I've, got my, I've got my laptop right here. We're gonna be going through all the details of the lab reports and all the sources that I used in my previous video. I feel like in my last video, I just kind of like jumped straight to my point without explaining the basis Oh, password incorrect. Why would you say that? I kind of just assumed that everybody kind of knew what I was talking about and we were all on the same page when really, I was supposed to bring it back about 10 notches and explain from the very, very beginning well enough. So the first thing that we're gonna go through in this video is have a look at all the sources that I spoke about in my previous video. And the first one we're gonna talk about is forensic hair analysis. So I spoke before about how Forensic hair analysis is used in crime scene investigation to identify suspects and that you can take a black person's hair, do forensic analysis on that hair strand and determine their race just by looking at their hair strand and their cuticle is a huge part of this. I'm assuming by now we all know what low porosity hair is, we all know what high porosity hair is, but actually we don't. By the end of this video, your definition of what porosity is, is definitely going to change because we're gonna get into it. So the first source that I used in my previous video was on the FBI webpage, and that's how they use microscopic hair analysis to identify suspects in a crime scene. So on the FBI website, I'll have all the sources of these linked down below as well. So some of them are gonna be accessible to you because they're just like common general documents, but I am gonna use some research papers that I have access through to work. So you might not be able to like access them, but you will be able to see everything that I'm doing on here. So you'll be able to see the entire research paper. Some of you might be able to access it, I don't know. So when we look at the FBI webpage, they say that many characteristics can be considered in microscopic hair identification. Three distinct anatomical regions of the hair, regions are associated with hair. The cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. The cuticle is the outermost layer and it protects the hair from environmental insults composed of flattened scale-like cells which overlap. There are so many different hair analysis that can conclude the race of a person, but we're really gonna be focusing on the cuticle because it's all I care about, because the cuticle is what determines your hair's porosity. So the FBI webpage continues to say, a number of microscopic characteristics associated with the cuticle are used in hair comparison. The thickness of the cuticle, the variation in the thickness, the presence of pigment and the color are all useful characteristics. In addition, the nature of the outer cuticle margin may be smooth, looped, ragged or damaged. When damage or artificial treatment to the hair is extreme, the cuticle may be removed, thereby causing damage to the next innermost region of the hair the cortex. And this is one thing that I also wanted to mention is that when we look at these cuticles and when we look at these microscopic images, keep in mind that, that you can definitely tell the difference between a damaged hair cuticle, a bleached hair cuticle, a relaxed hair cuticle, and somebody with natural virgin hair. So when we're seeing a picture of a black hair cuticle that is raised, that is got gaps, it's got whatever, keep in mind that this is a natural anatomy. It's not because of relaxers, it's not because of dyes, it's not because of bleach. So let's talk about, the first thing I want to talk about is the presence of the pigment. I know it's the third one listed there, but you know, it's the one I want to focus on because when we then go to the, when we then scroll further onto the FBI website, you can see what an African hair look, cuticle, what an African hair strand looks like, a Caucasian and an Asian hair strand looks like. Now I'm not going to delve too deep into the Asian and the 
Caucasian because I don't really care about that. As I previously mentioned in my other video is that Asians have the lowest porosity hair and Europeans, they also have low porosity hair but it's kind of like in the middle where Africans have notoriously high porosity hair, black people. So as you can have a look from these three pictures of the side by side of the microscopic image of racial determination, you can see that the Asian cuticle has a solid color throughout. So does the European one, and yet the African cuticle has got gaps like this. This is the presence of pigment. This is the first differentiation of high porosity hair. Now I know we previously talked about porosity as in your cuticles are just open or they're closed, but it's really not as simple as that. It's not only just if all your cuticles opened or closed, but the actual pattern of your cuticle. As you can see from the African hair cuticle, there are gaps in the pigments within the cuticles. If you can see, there's literally, it frequently splits along the hair shaft as described on the website. Black people have an irregular cuticle pattern as opposed to Asians and Caucasians where they have a uniform cuticular pattern throughout. So this irregular pattern in our cuticles increases our hair's porosity and you can tell that by the pigment so you can see these little dark spots these are pigments and then you see the clear spots these are lack thereof of pigments where there is gaps within the cuticular pattern of an african hair now another way that we can see this is from this website from the california innocence justice project as you can see they also do microscopic hair analysis to prove that people are innocent and whatnot and the way they have actually done this is really interesting and that's by putting your hair by putting a hair strand underneath UVA and UVB rays, i.e. the sun. Well, obviously they're mimicking the sun, but they didn't actually put it under the sun, but they're mimicking the sun. And as you can see here from the Asian, Caucasian, and African hair cuticles, there are differences. Looking here at the Asian cuticle, you can see that there is a regular smooth wave pattern within the cuticle. And you can tell that it's very smooth and flat. That's exactly why it has the bright white line. These images were taken on an electron microscope, by the way. As you can start to see from the Caucasian cuticle, it's slightly raised, it's kind of in the middle of the Asian and the African cuticle. But here from the African cuticle, it is clear to see that the cuticle is slightly raised and more so than that of a Caucasian and Asian cuticle. In the control here, you can clearly see that there are even cuticles that are more raised than others. And on top of that, you can see the irregular pattern. So if you have a look at this Caucasian cuticle, you can see that it is one smooth long wave where in the African cuticle, it's kind of split up into smaller scales. It's not as a regular pattern. There's a bit more gaps. There's areas of flakes. There's areas of lifting. And this is a natural African hair cuticle. And that's labeled by control. So whenever you're doing an experiment, you always have a control variable, which is the baseline of what you're going to compare your results to. So this control is the baseline. This is the norm. Now, if we take a look at after 12 hours of UVA, you can see that parts of the cuticles have started to raise. If we look at UVB, after 12 hours, we can see that the cuticles have raised more drastically. Both of them increase our hair's porosity. Now, what that tells me is that even though we have high porosity hair, minute you step outside, girl, your porosity is gonna increase even more. Like, that is crazy to me that, like, literally stepping outside the sun is gonna increase our hair's porosity, which actually makes sense as to why our hair gets dry over time, you know, second, third day of wash day, you're kind of getting a bit dry hair, you know, the porosity is increasing, you've been outside. And if we take a look at after two days of being exposed to UVA and UVB, I mean, UVB, look at that hair cuticle, look at that, it's raised crazily. So one thing I want to mention about porosity is that it's definitely a spectrum. There is no necessarily one size fits all. Now, even though black people fall into the bracket of high porosity hair, some people will have higher porosity than others. So for example, this control from the African hair strand is high porosity, but then so is this one after two hours in the sun. Some people's natural hair cuticle might look like this. Another thing that you can see from this California Innocence Justice Project um, source is that after two days of sun, the Caucasian and Asian cuticle it don't move! As you can see, the sun does not phase Asian and Caucasian hair in the same way that it does African. Now, I know you're probably wondering, why are you comparing us to Asians and Caucasians? We have completely different hair, and that's 100% true. But the bottom line is that Asians and Caucasians have had 
tons and tons of research and development, millions or even billions of dollars, pounds invested in research and development so that they can fully understand their hair where us black people haven't had that. So the best way that I have found in researching what to do to my hair is thinking, okay, what do Asians and Caucasians do? How does my hair differ from them and how do I have to change my routine to alter that, if that makes sense. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but they know what to do to their hair. So I'm like, okay, they know what to do. How's my hair different so I can figure out what I need to do? I mean, it sucks that we have to do it that way. Realistically, we should have research and development in the same way that other races do, but we don't. Like for example, looking at this source alone, I would say that black people need sun care in their hair. And yet I've never seen well, I have seen SPF for hair, but it's not as widely marketed as you'd think. I mean, look at these results. Two days in the sun and this is what a black person's cuticle looks like. Somebody, get me some SPF for my hair, okay? Get me some SPF for my hair. Those are the two sources that I used in my previous video. I honestly didn't explain them well enough, so I hope that that explained them a little bit better. I don't want to bombard you with way too much information that you don't actually need. The final source that I'm going to that I'm going to show you guys is a lab report. Before we do that, let's circle back to the FBI webpage and just tell you about the microscopic characteristics associated with the hair cuticle. So that's the thickness of the cuticle, the very in the thickness and the presence of pigment okay the next source is going to be this lab report now this lab report is by Sandra L. Kosh, Mark Shriver, Nina Jablonski and they are doctors at Pennsylvania State University Department of Anthropology the name of this biological study is variation in human hair ultrastructure among three biogeographic populations okay but this report is actually really nice because it's it's still sciencey, but it's very understandable and breaks down all of the details that you need to know. So let's take a look at the abstract. And in the abstract, I'm going to be focusing on, again, like I've previously mentioned, I'm going to be focusing solely on cuticle related stuff. I don't care about anything else for this video, okay? For this video, there might be something else that we need to know in the next video, but for this one, cuticles only, okay? Let's get an overview of this lab report. In the abstract, it says, our results revealed considerable variation in parameters examined, including the relationship of ultrastructure to biogeographic ancestry. Among the three me metapopulations studied, European, African, and East Asian, we identified hair cross-sectional shape, cuticle dimensions, and melanosome distribution as traits that reveal statistically significant ancestry related patterns now this is one thing that i want to touch on is that in my previous video a lot of people were like isn't it just a texture thing is it a curly head thing is it a coily head thing no this is a ancestry thing it's a genetic thing it's not because we have coily hair it's because we are black and i know people think oh you can't just box people in like that but really you can like that's kind of how genes work <laughs> this study establishes trait patterns in hair morphology and ultrastructure among three biogeographically defined metapopulations to improve the current understanding of human hair variation in hair form and establish a foundation for future studies on the genetic and development basis of phenotypic variation in hair ultrastructure related to genotype. So scrolling down then into the introduction and this introduction basically is going to explain why they decided to do the study. So let's talk about why they decided to look into the cuticle structure. So differences in hair ultrastructure have been the focus of a lot of research as you can see. Variation in cutic cuticle features, number of layers, total thickness and adhesion between layers. Remember when I told you about the FBI webpage, how they use that in microscopic analysis? These are repeatable results that many different institutions have seen, so they're repeatable. You know what repeatable means? Within individuals, within populations, and among groups is not, however, well known. Generalized assessments of thin or thick cuticle dimensions have been previously indicated among ancestry groups, but have not been rigorously tested for relationship to cross-sectional area and shape. So that's exactly why they've decided to look into this, because to be honest, they're right. There's, it's not very well known unless you're literally going to go looking on the FBI webpage and and all of that. There's not much detail that you can find in cuticle structure and the difference between cuticle structures between races. Scrolling down to the materials and methods, this is going to detail the methods that they used to get to 
these results. A sample of 65 human scalp hair samples were selected from among a larger study with 2,453 participants. That is a large sample size. Currently living in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, aged 18 and older and belonging to diverse ancestries. All participants were asked to state their self-identified ancestry and had been previously genotyped for genetic ancestry using at least 118KLD pruned autosomal SNPs. Now, I have no idea what that means. All I'm hearing is they tested them. You know, let's keep reading. Individuals with greater than 85% European, East Asian or African genetic ancestry whose hair was available for analysis were identified. So this is this is another point to mention is that biracial can definitely affect this. I'm talking strictly fully black people, okay? So as you can see from this particular study, it was taken from 85% black people. The hair samples were examined using light microscopy to ensure each was free of apparent chemical treatments. Again, important, okay? These are virgin hair samples that they're using, not relaxed, not dyed, not bleached, virgin hair samples, okay? That could alter the hair from melanosomes. From this narrowed participant pool, 60 hair samples were selected for analysis by TEM transition electron microscope. In order to lessen any sex dependent variability, only females were selected. How did they measure the cuticle? Cuticle measurements and layer counts were taken at four perpendicular locations on a hair cross section along the hair major and minor axis. No idea what that means. I'm guessing they went across one, two, three, four. At each location, the measurements were made to capture the total thickness of the cuticle and number of layers present. A single cuticle layer was counted as the sum of the thickness of the endocuticle and the exocuticle, which is basically the outer and inner portions of the cuticle cell. So imagine this cuticle cell, endo, exo endo exo right these were used to estimate the average thickness of the cuticle and average number of layers present per hair hairs from the 60 hairs captured by 10 imaging 20 per ancestry group were analyzed for variation within and among our sample population so now we know the sample size now we know the purpose of the study let's take a look at what the results were by ancestry tests of cuticle thickness showed significant differences between african and european hairs and between african and east asian hairs the median number of layers making up the cuticle differed by population. The median number of layers making up the cuticle differed by population and co-occurred within shape differences among ancestry groups. We found no significant difference in total cuticle thickness or number of cuticle layers between European and East Asian populations. Instances of cuticles cuticle layer separation occurred in hairs from pe persons with African ancestry, while cuticle layers appeared to adhere together more in persons of East Asian and European ancestry. So I mentioned before in my previous video, we don't just have one layer of cuticle, so it's not just as easy as open, close, open, close, open, close. Is it high porosity, is it low porosity? It's also the number of layers of cuticles that we have. And as you can see from the Asian cuticle, hella layers, okay? There's about six to eight, I believe. I've read that in an article somewhere else. I ain't gonna count them, but. And the European one has also a number of layers. Now, when we look at the African one, like three layers at a maximum. This is exactly what makes our hair high porosity. Not just that our cuticles open and close, but the number, but the number of layers of cuticles that we have. On top of that, the irregular pattern that we have. So there's gaps within the hair cuticle. So the irregular pattern causes gaps. And as you can clearly see here, there are gaps within the cuticle pattern. There's a gap here, there's a gap there. And like we previously mentioned, this isn't relaxed hair. It's not chemically treated hair. It's not dyed, it's not bleached naturally and as you can see here the adhesion between the cuticles leaves gaps and these gaps all increase our hair's porosity these gaps here all allow moisture water to just easily enter and easily escape from our hair and so that's clearly visible from the results of this lab now if we scroll even more we can also see the cuticle thickness so again like i've previously mentioned not just open and close the pattern of the cuticles matter, of which we've established black people have an irregular pattern. The second thing that matters, the number of layers that we've got. Now we've established black people have less layers. The next parameter that determines our hair porosity is the cuticle thickness. So the actual thickness of each single cuticle that you have 
exo endo they measured it so as you can see the cuticle thickness by population shows this this figure here is the distribution of median cuticle thickness per person black line equals p0 population median now this black line here for the asians as you can see is about let's say three microns thick Europeans aren't that far behind, let's say maybe 2.8 microns thick, and as you can see here, the African cuticle median was, a, let's say 2.6 for argument's sake. I feel like the numbers are in these tables somewhere, but I ain't going for all that. So that's another reason why our hair is very high porosity, because one, irregular cuticle pattern, two, less number of layers in the cuticle structure, three, thinner cuticles than everybody else, Four, naturally raised cuticles, results and conclusions of this lab report. And it said, table five shows the results from ANOVA tests for the cu total cuticle thickness and number of layers between, Afri between ancestry groups. Differences in cuticle thickness were larger between African and non-African populations, meaning Asians and Caucasians weren't that different from each other, but Africans was way different from everybody else. Significant differences were recorded in the number of cuticle layers between African and non-African hair. I don't know about you, but I am slumped after reading all of that. So guys, I really hope that gave you a bit more insight into where this crazy girl just came from screaming that black people don't have low porosity hair. I do have a video on how you can seal your hair cuticles and take care of high porosity hair. I'll have that link down below. And I think the thing is as well is that we're kind of trying to navigate our hair our hair care routine freestyling where like Asians and Caucasians have got reports and reports and encyclopedias worth of research and development into our hair where we're just trying to figure things out so of course we're going to make mistakes of course we're going to go down some wrong paths and be like oh it's not there and go over there okay we are scrounging on the fbi website to find a microscopic image of black hair why why is it so hard two things to take away from this video black people have high porosity hair second thing to take away we need some hair SPF up in here. Guys, the sun is killing my hair. My cuticles are raising as we speak. Oh my gosh. Uh, so guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. I really hope that that clarified some people's questions about things. And honestly, there are a lot more videos like this to come. So if you are sick of the science, you're gonna get even more sick of the science. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.